Welcome to A Large Model Showman's Engine, Part 3. This episode is called Commencing the Renovation. And I'm going to begin by having a look at the paintwork. This clip shows the top of the belly tank, and as you can see, clearly there is a chip to the paintwork. All these dings and marks need to be repaired, without repainting the entire engine. Plus, all of the lining on this engine is done by hand, it is paint. Still on the belly tank, here's another chip out of the paintwork. And as you can see clearly, the yellow line's also been damaged. I think I'll start on the part of the belly tank where it's just a paint repair. This, by the way, is just a quick experiment for the video. I'm applying some Phoenix Precision Paints Crimson Lake to the damaged area. This is a highly magnified image, and when I was doing the job, I just didn't notice the two dirty marks down the side, but as I said, this is just an experiment, it's not important. When I do the job for real, I will clean the area first of all using some panel wipe, and on larger areas I will also apply some etching primer. The big problem with touching in paint in this manner is the fact that when the old paint was chipped and fell off, it leaves a depression in the depth of the paint. So I think it's probably going to be a good idea in some cases to rub down more of the paint so I can feather the edge of the damaged part and get a good finish. But for now I'm just dabbing away with my brush to just see what it looks like. At this stage I'm only interested in getting the colour match right. And the good news is Phoenix Precision Paints Crimson Lake is a really close match to the paint that is already on the engine. I'm going to have to be very careful doing this job because it's too easy to just daub the paint everywhere then the paint will run and sag and look terrible and besides as I've just mentioned the entire area needs cleaning and degreasing before the paintbrush goes anywhere near it and this is going to be a bit of a challenge on the opposite side of the belly tank we have a chip in both the red paint and the yellow paint and the problem is, the yellow paint is not what I thought it was going to be. I would normally use Humbrol yellow gloss paint. But this yellow paint's different, it has some green in it. Using a piece of cardboard, like an artist's palette, I'm mixing a different shade of yellow. This is Humbrol gloss yellow paint, with just a touch of Great Northern Railway's green in it. And a quick test tells me that this is not bad. In this clip you can still clearly see the depression where the original paint was. For small paint damage like this it's not too bad. All I need to do is let this paint dry and then apply some more to fill the hole. While the paint was drying I thought it would be a good idea to have a look at these two hatches in the roof. This is a great design, even the small brass pegs can't fall out. And if I just lift one side I can pull the prop down into the clip on the roof to hold the panel as shown here. This is a really good feature for me. As I've got older, I've developed a bad back, possibly from years of moving heavy equipment about. But these removable roof panels just allow me to gently lean over to lubricate the moving parts of the engine, or even to open and shut the regulator as I've just shown. Driving a showman's engine of this size is not an easy job because all the parts you need to handle when you're running it are quite inaccessible, unless of course you're lucky enough to have extremely long arms. To make it quicker to access things, I'm putting all the paints that I'm going to be using in a blue box. That will save time trying to find them. As soon as Simon from the Steam Workshop left after delivering the engine, the first thing I did was refit the nameplate to the front of the engine. This is another nameplate that goes on one side. Looking at some earlier photographs of this engine on the Steam Workshop website, it would seem that originally there were two nameplates like this, but one must have fallen off, because the big heavy brass nameplate was only held to the red bit that you can see in the top right of the picture by one line of double-sided tape. And there's nothing wrong with using double-sided tape, but you do need a very good surface for it to stick to. That's why initially on the belt sander, followed by rubbing down with sandpaper, I keyed the surface at the rear of the nameplate, and here in the outer part of the workshop I've just sprayed the rear of the nameplate using etching primer. And sometime later I painted the rear of the nameplate 
using some ordinary sort of cheap cellulose black paint. Now the double sided tape should stick very well to this. In this clip I'm measuring from each end to make sure I put the double sided tape in the centre. I put three pieces of this 3M double sided tape in position on the nameplate. And the most difficult part of the job was peeling off the plastic backing because this stuff is really sticky. The red nameplate mounting fastens to this piece of wood. It was probably originally attached with some wood screws, but I'd rather use long bolts. In this clip I'm tapping the holes in the wood. This is a taper tap that I'm using. That's a good thing because once the holes are threaded in the wood, they will be slightly tapered, and when I screw in the bolts, they will really grip the wood. Here's a finished job, so we now have a nameplate on one side and on the front. As I mentioned earlier, there were two nameplates like this, one at each side of the generator. But the original one at the other side was obscured by the three Frankenstein's laboratory type switches on the electrical panel at the other side. So I'm quite happy just to have a nameplate on the front and at this side. And that's it for this episode, there's a long way to go yet. I'd just like to say, as usual, in these weird times, stay safe, stay well, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.